So you have a few bucks aside and you're interested in investing. But you're wondering what you want to invest for the best investment return? The past 100 years speak for itself. But why is that? In this video, we will dive deep into financial waters and we'll figure out where you can put your money to make it go boom. Small disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor and I do not condone any of this. This video is sponsored by Hoxaw. Browse through high quality streetwear t-shirts with fair prices. Make sure to check out hoxaw.com and use the code below for 5% discount. This is the graph that shows what happens to your $100 if you have invested in different investments 100 years ago. Now, I know this may look a bit confusing and surreal, so let me explain. On this graph, you see different types of investments that are currently most popular. You have small stocks, S&P 500, corporate bonds, treasury bills, world portfolio, and CPI, which is not an investment, but rather an inflation rate. If you take a look at the small stock line, you can see the drastic difference between other investments. The second largest value of the investments is S&P 500 and so on. You might be wondering, how is this possible? What should I invest now? The real question is, what is the risk behind each investment? Not only is it important for your wealth, but also where are you putting your money? People who don't consider risk and only think about profitability are the main victims of pyramid schemes. When it comes to profitability, you can actually calculate that with different formulas, but we are not here for that math, but rather in what to invest. Based on the graph that we just saw, you would probably suspect that you should invest into small stocks since they were the most profitable over the span of 100 years. The answer is yes and no. If you take a look at this graph that represents the profitability and risk, we can analyze the risk in terms of profitability. You can see that the stocks line is more flat and profitable, but the risk are higher than the bonds line. If the line is more flat, that means the risk is higher. As we said, the most profitable investments in the past 100 years were small stacks with insanely high returns. That also means that they were containing high risk. What is the difference between small stocks and normal stocks or S&P 500? Small stocks, in simple words, are small cap stocks and are share of companies with total market capitalization in the range of $300 million to $2 billion. Small cap companies have the potential of high rates of growth, making them appealing investments, though their stocks may experience more volatility and pose higher risk to investors. The difference between S&P 500 and small stocks is that S&P 500 is fairly safe in terms of investments and it is very profitable. That is why most of financial advisors will recommend you to buy it. The Standard and Poor's 500 or simply the S&P 500 is a stock market index tracking the stock's performance of 500 large companies listed on stock exchanges in the United States. Currently, it holds value of $3,872. You might notice a trend coming up. The higher the profitability, the higher the risk. What we need to do is find a middle ground between risk and profitability. Let us do some basic calculation. If we sum up all of the values of investments and we find the middle point, it should give us an approximate range of where we should start. Now, we know the smallest investment has little to no risk involved, so that won't be a problem in this calculation. Let's add up the profitability and we need to divide this by 6 and we get around 1,266,065 USD dollars. So based on this statistical calculation, we can see that everything below our result is just not worth investing in. Okay, let's check the graph one more time and mark the spot of 1,266,065 USD dollars. If the last statement is correct, you shouldn't invest in anything other than small stocks. But why is S&P 500 so popular among investors? Well, it's a great long-term investment. Think about it. You have a portfolio of 500 biggest companies. Among these 500 companies, it is guaranteed that at least one will blow up. So what I would do, obviously not suggest that you do any of this, is to invest 60% of my investment money into small stocks and other 40% into S&P 500. Are you sure about that? But in which small stock would you rather invest? You should check different websites that check the statistics and will recommend which stock you should invest in. 
If I was to invest into small stocks, I would invest into companies that are specialized in pharmacy, medical technology, biotechnology, and so on, and other 40% in S&P 500. And that is it for this video. Make sure to leave a like and comment, and make sure to check our latest videos.